Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today's video is another unusual money making method video. It's been a couple months since I've done my last one. I don't like doing them too frequently or else I think they get a bit repetitive. I think every month or every two months or so is a nice break between them. And I think it's just a good way to sort of gather all of your suggestions for unusual money making methods because I get them sent on Discord, on Twitter, on YouTube comments, messages. So I sort of have to go through all of them, pick out the ones that I like the most and then put them hopefully into the video. So for the last couple of months, I've had many suggestions. Unfortunately, many of them are sort of repeats of what I've already done in the past or sort of methods that you guys think may be unusual, but they aren't really. For example, I get a lot of people telling me to make planks at the sawmill. And you know, while I guess not many people do that, it's a pretty known method. It's not really unusual, something people you know do daily for their money. So many of the times I sort of have to sort of think of my own ones or just sort of look at the market and see what could potentially make me some money. Now today's video I think is pretty great because I made actually quite a bit of profit, some of the most I've ever made on the unusual money making method series. Now this is a fair warning to you, just because I made profit on them, does that mean you're going to make profit off them, okay? These money making method videos always tend to go either way. Some people, a lot of people really like them and some people just hate money making methods in general because you're like, you ruined my money making method. and I'm guessing, you know, some of you may have tried these out in the past, but not many of you do this consistently every day to make money. That being said, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to drop a like. And don't forget to comment your unusual way to make money. If you want me to test it out and put it in a video, send me a Twitter DM, send me a YouTube message or a YouTube comment. I'll go through all of them, and if I like it enough and it makes me enough money, I'll put it in the next unusual money making method video. So up first we have a method that I'm sure many of you guys have heard of in the past. It's just one that I sort of always avoided because of the grand exchange prices until recently when I saw how expensive some of the prices of the flowers were. And flowers is the key word there because I'm going to be planting 500 mithril seeds for the flowers, picking all of them, and then selling what I get to the grand exchange. Now again, this is a method you guys have probably heard of before, but never really tried yourself because it's a very tedious process of just planting the flower and then picking it up, planting the flower and then picking it up. Again, not really the most fun thing in the world. It's very, very repetitive, but then again, RuneScape itself is repetitive, so it's a, it's a classic RuneScape moneymaker right here. Now, the majority of the flowers you guys get from planting these mithril seeds are pretty useless, mainly the red, blue, yellow, purple, orange mixed, and assorted flowers. Those are usually pretty worthless and sell for under 75 GP. Now, in this case, I got a bit lucky with one of the flowers because there was somebody buying the purple flowers at a pretty high price, over 1500 GP each. And the mithril seeds I was buying for about 190 GP each, so right there I'm already making profit on all of those but there are two flowers in the mithril seed collection that sell for a lot of money the black flowers and the white flowers and that's mainly because there's a 0.23 chance of you getting black flowers when you plant a mithril seed and a 0.06 chance of you getting white flowers so they are very rare flowers compared to the other ones all of the other ones are over 10 percent the highest one being blue flowers and orange flowers at 15.3 percent so as you can imagine the black and white flowers are going to be a lot more expensive since they're so much rare from the mithril seeds the wiki explains it pretty well so if you want more info you can check it out out there but in my case I decided to go for 500 mithril seeds just to see if I can get lucky with some black and white flowers planting and picking the 500 mithril seeds took about half an hour it's a very tedious and annoying process something I did not enjoy but the end result is what I was really curious in just to see how much money I could make and from the final loot from the 500 mithril seeds I managed to get three white flowers and three black flowers so at least we didn't go dry on either of those and we can make some money off of it in terms of the flowers that I got it was pretty consistent with what the percentages were on the wiki and all of them sold for pretty much what I expected them to sell for except as I mentioned earlier for the purple flowers which sold for 1450 each so I sold 72 of those for 104k so right there I had already made all my money back and then the black flowers sold for 101k each and then the white flowers sold for 182k each so off those two flowers the black and white flowers i sold six of them combined for over 849k which uh, is pretty much all of my profit but the fact i made that much just off those six flowers was pretty insane i bought the 500 mithril seeds for 93k on the grand exchange and i sold all the flowers for 900 and 62k on the grand exchange so i made 10 times the amount of the original cash deck i had 93k which was very unexpected i didn't look at the prices of the flowers beforehand so to see them go for that much <laughs> totally caught me off guard and now i've made 900k plus now the thing is as i mentioned these flowers are very inconsistent in terms of their prices on the grand exchange so one day i could have probably made maybe only a couple hundred k and another day i could have made even more who knows we can technically say that this method is 1 million plus gp per hour since those 500 myth seeds only took me about 35 minutes to plant and pick but again the price is very so much i wouldn't try this one out i think i just got very lucky but i thought i'd show it to you guys because it is a bit unusual and the profit was very surprising so this next money maker comes to us from 
Josher2K on Twitter. Thank you, Josh, for the DM. I do greatly appreciate it. And we're going to be turning coconuts into coconut milk. Now, this is one of those methods, and it's one of these items that I just totally forgot even existed. Coconut milk is an item in the game. I've definitely seen it before. I've definitely probably used it before. It's just an item that I totally forgot even existed. And I could totally just forget out you could use a hammer on a coconut. And if you have vials in your inventory, you can use them on the vials and you get yourself some lovely coconut milk. Not a huge fan of coconuts myself, but I'm sure some of you are. Coconuts actually used to be pretty expensive, but then... Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed. Zolra came into the game. So, uh, yeah, Zolra, thank you for that. So, coconuts nowadays go for about 120 GP on the Grand Exchange, so very, very cheap to what they were before Zolra came into the game. And actually, the coconut milk goes for about 300 to 350 GP. The GE price is a bit different than what the price actually is. It says that it's going for 400, and maybe people actually do buy for 400 when the demand is there, but I managed to sell mine for about 300 GP each. So per coconut milk that I'm making, I'm making about 200 GP profit per one. But the process of turning these coconuts into coconut milk is a bit tedious because you have to use a hammer on the coconuts themselves and they turn into these half coconuts with the milk inside of them. And then you have to use the coconuts on the vial of water and then you get yourself the cano- <laughs> The what? The coconut milk. It's pretty click intensive because you have to individually click on the coconut when turning them into the half coconuts and then you have to use the coconuts on the vial to click all of them. There's not an automated process that does it for you, so pretty click intensive, I guess. You're also left with a bunch of these coconut shells, which you can actually use to make super compost. They're actually the cheapest option. But the thing I found interesting is that you can put these into the Grand Exchange price check thing, uh, which usually isn't possible because these aren't tradable. You can't trade them to people. So the fact that you can put them into the price guide, I found, I think there are some items that you can actually put into the price guide, but you can't actually trade on the Grand Exchange. Maybe I'm, I'm losing it right now, but that, I just found that a bit weird. So from the original 100 that I bought, I actually made 19K, and this process took all of five minutes, so actually really not too bad. But I decided to take it one step further and buy a thousand of these coconuts and absolutely ruin my wrist in hopes of making a bit more money. Now this took a lot longer than I wanted to, almost close to an hour. <laughs> And when I finally finished, I sold all of it and made a grand total of about 190k. So, yeah, not the most money you can make from an unusual money maker, but I found this one incredibly unusual, which is the main point of this series. It's just to find unusual money makers. It's not to find the best money makers in the game. It's just to find unusual ways to make money, and this is unusual and I made money. So thank you, Josh, again for the suggestion. I will not be doing this again, however. The final method of today is going to be me making Zenite jewelry. Now, you're probably thinking it's not the most unusual thing in the world, right? Just buy the unenchanted version of the jewelry on the Grand Exchange, enchant it, boom, you made yourself some profit. Well, it's not that easy because people really don't sell the unenchanted version of the jewelry on the Grand Exchange, and people really don't sell things like the uncut Zenite, or even the regular Zenite as well. What is sold quite commonly on the Grand Exchange, though, is the regular Zenite Shard, which is a drop from Demonic Arillas, and then a regular Cut Onyx. And you need those two things combined at the Temple of Marimbo on a Patol while wielding a zombie Grigri. Now, if you're going to be making a lot of these at the same time, you're obviously going to need quite a bit of cash. In my case, I spent 195 million, 391,000, and 700 and 82 GP on 14 Onyx and 14 Zenite Shards. The process is pretty simple, as I mentioned. All you have to do is go to Apatol, use the Zenite Shard and Onyx on the flames and turn it into an uncut Zenite, and then turn that into a cut Zenite by using a chisel on it and then going with a gold bar, and in this case, a ring mold, because I was gonna be making rings of suffering, and then go to any furnace, turn them, into the Zenite ring, enchant them with level 7 enchant, and boom, we have a bunch of Zenite jewelry, in this case, the Ring of Suffering. I did also spend about 100k on the level 7 enchant supplies, because if you're doing 14 of those enchants, it's 20 blood runes and 20 soul runes, as well as a cosmic rune per enchant, so it actually adds up to quite a bit. Now, I decided to choose Rings of Suffering, because the night before, I noticed that they were selling for 142 million GP, which means I can make up to 200k profit per Ring of Suffering that I was making. But unfortunately, the price has dropped overnight by about 150k or so, so I didn't make as much profit as I thought I would. I ended up selling those Rings of Suffering for about 14 million GP each, and if we add on the 100k, which was the cost of the enchanting, we can see that I made about 500k off of those Rings of Suffering. Now, obviously, this is still very, very good. The entire process of turning all of those Zenite Shards and Onyxes into this jewelry took all of like five minutes, a very, very quick process. So to make 500K in five minutes, I really should have no complaints, but I felt that I should have made a bit more seeing as the night before the prices were so much higher. So I decided to try it with another Zenite jewelry, a piece of Zenite jewelry, which was 
the Amulet of Torture, which is the one that requires 98 crafting to make. This time I ended up buying 8 Zenite Shards and 8 Onyxes because for some reason I couldn't buy any more of the Zenite Shards and it wasn't Grand Exchange Limit because I went on another account to try to buy more, but I couldn't even buy it on that account. So prices were really weird or nobody was selling them, I do not know. But I have 8 this time, I repeated the entire process, went to the flames, turned them all into uncut Zenites, cut the Zenites with my beautiful chisel, went to the furnace, turned them all into Zenite Amulet Unstrungs, I threw a ball of wool on all of them, and boom, I have a Zenite Amulet. I enchanted all of them, and there we have our Emmy of Torture. Luckily, the Amulet of Tortures were selling for quite a bit more than the Ring of Sufferings were, so I knew I was going to make a bit more profit, even though I only had 8 of them. And the 8 Zenite Shards and 8 Onyxes that I bought before, and I actually bought for more of a lower price, because I looked at the prices and tried to buy them for a lot lower than they were going, which luckily they did, and it just takes a bit more time. The torture is sold within about five minutes or so, which is very, very nice. And if we look at the cost of supplies in the beginning, we're going to add about 50k for the cost of the level set of an enchant. We can say that my cost of supplies were 111,600,000 GP, and we sold the torches for 112,410,000 GP. So this time we made about 800k profit on the Amulet of Tortures. For how fast the process is of turning the Zenite Shard and Onyx into whatever jewelry you want, I have to say that the profit is really, really good. Now obviously the only down thing is, or downside is, that you need to have a high crafting level. In this case, 98 crafting for the Amulet of Tortures, and I think for the Suffering, it's 89 crafting. I lost so much money on crafting that this really doesn't make up for it at the end of the day, but it is sort of cool to see that a high crafting level, you can make lots of money off something like Zenite Jewelry, which I found unusual and pretty cool. Now the thing is, these prices sort of vary. The Zenite Jewelry sometimes crafts Ashes, it sometimes goes up depending on if a new boss is released or if you know people are panic selling or panic buying. It, it really depends on the prices on the GE. So you can lose money off this, you can make a lot more money off this. And I think next time that maybe a new boss is released and one of these things is on is in high demand. I may try to see if I can uh, make a lot more money off this because there is definitely potential in this. But anyways, guys, that's it for the three methods today. Thank you guys all again for tuning in. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to drop a like on the... Wow, I have to burp. Like on the video and don't forget to comment your unusual money making method. And I have one final thing for you guys. If you know what this item is, leave it in your comment because it's an item I had no idea existed, but I found pretty cool. Anyways, guys, thank you all for watching. Hope to see you next time. Have a good one and peace. Wow.